Hey guys, I'm Dan. Um, I'm a character artist from the UK and I'm hoping to do a really quick tutorial about how to go through clothing texturing um, because I know it's something that I've struggled with in the past and it's something that I've always wanted to push myself in. So if, if this helps anyone, that'd be awesome. That'd, that'd be so awesome for me. So um, in this tutorial, we're gonna go over how we're gonna go from something like this that a lot of people seem to do with, with with clothing texturing where it's just a, a weave texture and not really anything else and then by the end of it we're going to try and achieve something closer to this where we're going to we're getting a lot more um kind of information and displacement and bubbles and little things that really sell um kind of a cotton like clothing material so um let's go back to our substance scene so by the end of it we're going to have something like this nothing amazing but for the time it took um, it's it's it definitely is a perfect base to work from when uh, texturing uh, clothing. So let's turn everything off and let's just go back to just the weave. So that's what the weave looks like. Let's quickly turn it. Yeah, let's delete everything really quickly. So you've got that, and I'll even delete I even delete the weave so we can go that very quickly because you might not know how to do that as well. So let's go to bitmap mask by right clicking on the layer. Weave 2. I would recommend to make your own um, weave if you want or buy one online. But to be honest, the, the Weave 2 is just good. It's just good. It, it just works. And I, I've worked with so many different clients and I've used Weave 2 um, and it works. And also for the sake of the tutorial, if you're following along, um, I feel like I'd, I'd hate to, you know, have like 300 plugins and be like, oh yeah, if you want to follow along, you've got to have these plugins. No, this is all stuff within Substance Painter. So, um, yeah, hopefully I'll make that easier for you guys. So, now that we have the weave, what we're going to do is we're going to set it to like quite an appropriate size. Um, for the sake of it's a games texturing tutorial, um, this might not apply for film because they might you might want to make it as real as possible and have the weaves, you know, quite small because in real life, weaves on your clothing are, are tiny, you know. But um, if you're working on like a third-person shooter game and your client wants to see the weaves, sometimes you've got to consider pushing that a bit, you know. Um, like I've worked with some clients on a third person shooter game where they wanted the, the weaves to be seeable from all the way out here. So we had to have the, the weaves closer to something like, if I can quickly go do it, like there. You need to still be able to see it from even here, you know. And that's quite, that's a that are massive weaves. But it, it works, it helps for, um, for those kind of games. Um, even Last of Us, you might be saying, like, that's a that's a game. But even then, I'm assuming they probably just kind of made the weaves a bit bigger than they need to be. Um, just for you to see it, you know, since it is a third-person game. So, now we've got that. Let's set that just a bit higher, just so you can see what's going on while I work on this. So, now we've got that. We're going to go back to the base color. And, ooh, itching my eye, sorry. Let's turn off everything. Ugh. And we're just going to add the color. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to get the base color and we're just going to get a bit higher. So we're going to have something closer to this. Okay, now we're going to go to height and we're going to tap the height and have that just, just about there. You know, same thing for the color and, and size like I was talking about with the weave. Um, some people or whatever project you're on, especially if you're importing this into a um, un into Unreal Engine or a games engine, sometimes you need to push the height just a bit because I've noticed that, you know, it'll look like this in substance, but then you put it into, into Unreal and, and the height or the, the kind of normal information just won't pop as much. So um, it's always interesting to go back and forth, but from what I've seen, I feel like around here, 0 0.5, especially for Weave, is usually the best kind of bet. So now we've got that, let's turn on the roughness. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the roughness quite quite low. So it's just, just kind of catching the light a bit go to the roughness we can see that that's darker than the base underneath so that's the base underneath and that's the weave um, with that it just kind of helps pop the 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 weave pieces out a bit if I turn off the roughness really quickly you should be able to see just things are popping a bit it's subtle but it, but it definitely helps um, so now that we've got that what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a new fill layer and we're gonna start adding some color displacement so add bitmap mask I'm gonna go here and let's do flakes. So there's one called Gradient Flake. This one's really good. So we're gonna put that on, go 
to gradient flakes, we're going to click on it, and we're going to set that down, saying something closer to that, right? And that looks a bit poo poo, but what we're going to do is we're going to set that to like a nice dark, just color, and uh, we're going to go through the different. Uh, let's do multiply. So we're going to go for multiply for the filter, and then now already what we've got is a nice kind of break up in color. But you might be thinking it's a bit a bit too over the top. Maybe it's making it a bit darker than I want it to be because that's quite bright. Now it's got a lot more darker. So what we can do is just kind of mess around with it, with the transparency on it, just so you get that little bit of the change in color. That's quite nice. Um, if we want, just so there's a lot more kind of shapes going on, let's go just a bit bigger and then a bit more subtle. There we go. That's quite nice. Um, already, that feels a lot more real, you know, compared to something which is flat color, you know, uh, clinical color. So there, there we go. Nice. Um, well, we're going to do that again, but this time we're going to go bitmap, gradient, set that really low, but then what we're going to do is uh, mess with the range. Do you know what? No, not that one. Sorry, I'm so sorry. We're going to use spots. We're going to use spots for this one. So let's go put in spots, and we're going to use gradient spots hmm, one. One's good. So let's go to Gaussian spots one. We're going to set that quite low, so we've got that now, and we're going to set the balance to something close to that, right? And then we're going to go through, mess with the different filters. To be honest, I wish I, I could tell you the exact filters to use, but it's more just kind of um, going through them until you get that nice one. So look, divide is nice, divide is nice. See how you just get that little bit of, bit of light color coming through? Kind of just helps it. We actually go to the base color you can see now. Look at that, that's pretty nice, you know? Compared to, I don't know, that, right? You have that, that breakup. It looks really nice. So, back to material. And now, oh, we're gonna do my favorite thing. So we're gonna add a fill layer. We're gonna turn off everything but normal. Oh, here we go. And we're gonna add the flake, bro. The flake uh, material. So, let's put it on really quickly. So what the flake brush does, not the flake brush, the flake material does, is it gives you this wow. this kind of break up in the shadows, you know. So if we quickly go over to the normal map, we can see that what it's doing. If we just make it a bit bigger, um, it's it's like a just confetti. It's normal map confetti, and what it's able to do is just kind of if you you understand the principles of normals, it's able to catch light from different angles and kind of create this kind of um, randomness that that just looks just awesome. Obviously, when it's massive like this, it looks quite horrifying. Um, and you might be asking, oh, but Daniel, why don't you just use like a like a height mask? Like, because you've obviously used it for the for the for the weave. So yeah, let's put the height mask on really soon, quickly and see how that looks. <laughs> looks terrible. <laughs> and the reason why it looks terrible, and obviously we can mess around with it a bit, but the reason it looks terrible is because um, it's it's quite binary, or at least it's quite flat. It's just thinking about black and white compared to normal, where it's gonna pick from four different angles left right up down um, so on the gradient wheel the normal gradient wheel um, so it just looked bubbly it just looks kind of rubbish um, so comparatively to that where it's just gonna be getting the light from up and not really get much uh, it just looks a bit odd if we go back to the normal you can see that that's also it just feels like it's it's kind of sitting on it rather than kind of adding this extra geo do you know what I mean? I hope you get what I mean. So let's add on the normal again. So see how the light is able to kind of break up a lot nicer. So not to keep harping on about it, but if we look here and we look at just the, let's even turn off the weave. So see here with this ball, see how the gradient is like perfect. See how it goes from dark to light, just effortlessly, right? Um, like a like a, like a a glass ball, it just looks so perfect how it just the, the, the gradient. You get what I mean. <laughs> I don't know why I'm going on so much about it. So, when you add the flake, what it's able to do is break up the shadows so it just kind of feels, I don't it just feels there. I don't know how to explain it. I feel like with something with cotton, especially in clothing, there is that randomness where if you really just, look, just I'm not mad, I'm not mad, but look at your, <laughs> look at your clothing and see how the light interacts with it. It's not, as smooth as is something like your phone 
right? Where the light is gonna perfectly kind of go off of it or, oh my God, a cup. Right, I'm not mental. I'm, I'm really, tr <laughs> really trying to make a point here, but the light will um, kind of gradient off of it perfectly compared to something like clothing where there's all those little tufts and little breakups that it's not gonna look perfectly gradient in the shadows. So I think I've gone on too much about this, but I hope you get what I mean. So obviously you've got that, that maybe looks a bit too overkill. So what we can do is we can go to normal. Um, we're gonna set that to something like 50%. Just gonna get to see that. That's nice. Just that little bit of fuzz. That little bit of fuzz, like static, you know. Uh, and we turn everything back on. And now already we've got something that feels. It feels. It feels like real cloth, comparatively to something more like this, right? Where it just feels, just like a weave texture and substance painter. Um, so, at this point, you could just finish here, but there's one more step I want to do, um, that just really sells it. So what we're gonna do is add another fill layer and we're gonna go here and we're going to add the Gaussian Spots 1 again. We're gonna go here, we're gonna set it really low, but this time we're gonna to go to balance. And we're gonna set that to something like this, level 0 0.2. So again, these little spots will be a bit bigger as well. A bit bigger as well. So the reason I'm doing this, if I quickly get open, um, uh, da -da 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 this picture. What we can see here is that, again, you might look like a mad mad person looking at your, your clothing so closely, but um, these little balls of cloth will kind of build up over time, especially when you're, you're rubbing it or you're, um, or I don't know, you, you fall over and you scuff it. There's gonna be these little balls of, of cloth, especially, let's say you get out, get out one of your like really old hoodies and just stare at like just the arms and you'll see just these little scuffs and little um, balls that have kind of, just kind of, I don't know, joined together in the um, in the cloth. You get what I mean, <laughs> you get what I mean. So, pretty much the principle of this. You go here, num, 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 and we're gonna get height, and we're gonna set this a bit higher. And wow, wow, we've got the, the thing that I just explained for two minutes. <laughs> I'm sorry. So again, we can go here. Maybe set it to like a lighter color, just to bring out, again, we want it to just be pushed a bit so you can see it from a bit further away. Even from here, you can kind of see those little spots coming through just slightly, just sells it. Um, and then, yeah, you've, you've got a really good base good cloth texture, like just like that. And again, it's it's such a, look, look, how, look how many layers we have. That's like one, two, three, four, five. That's five layers, and we've got that. And if you wanted to, you could probably just make that a smart mask, I mean, a smart material, and you could just reuse this and just change it around. Um, and again, there's probably much easier or better ways to do this, but let's just say you're in a hurry and you need to get clothing done very quickly. There you go, you have, you have it done. You have very quick clothing done. Um, and then after that, you know, you can go crazy, you can add grunges, you can add all this stuff, you can, do that. You can mess with the the roughness. So let's just mess with the roughness a bit. Ooh, let's go here. Add some color. It's it's um especially with clothing, and I will stress this specifically about clothing. Roughness and color displacement really helps sell the realism. Good statement, Daniel. <laughs> but no, I, I I wish I had like an end to that. But it, it kind of just it just brings out a bit. It really kind of makes it feel like it's been lived in. You know, it's the same that applies to environment art, right? Of, of like environmental storytelling. I feel like with clothing, this is probably the easiest and most passive way of just quickly telling someone that this has been worn before ever, you know, compared to, I don't know, it's the year 3007 when, <laughs> when, uh, not a single dust particle ever falls on, on a single soul. So, yeah, by the end of it, you're getting something that, that feels real. Or at least you could kind of touch that, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, that's 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 my tutorial. I hope um, you don't think I'm an idiot. <laughs> and I hope that that's helped some people. And again, if, if, um, if you ever want to message me or, or get any more information about this stuff or just texturing advice, I love texturing. Um, I'll put my um, Discord in the link below, and if you have any questions, just message me, because I, I, I love texturing. And for anyone that's new to that stuff, 
I'd rather explain it in the most easiest way possible um, so you can just get very quick, easy results than, you know, trying to go through, I don't know, setting up like a million different plugins. Um, but yeah, what's the best phrase? What's the phrase? Oh my God, it's my first video. I need to have some interesting phrase. Um, don't work hard, work smart. There you go. Um, yeah, there you go. That's my phrase. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you so much. And thank you for watching. And I hope I didn't take up too much of your time. And I will see you soon. Bye. Bye.